Hey dad, do you want a hot dog? How about a hamburger? You want cheese on that? All right, one cheeseburger coming up. If you think that was odd, you should take a look at some of these plays. Welcome to Philadelphia Baseball History. On this channel, we talk about the history of baseball from the A's to the Phillies to the 19th century. And sometimes we talk about contemporary baseball issues. So if you love baseball and if you love Philadelphia, stick around and subscribe to our channel. Our heroes. They were given a special place of honor in our cathedrals to glory. You too can honor your heroes of your youth. Just go to tpublic.com and look for Philadelphia baseball history. We're going to look back on some odd plays in Philly's history with a concentration on triple plays and would be triple plays. And since we started with an Astro skit, Let's go back to a game that involved the Houston Astros. I'm talking game four of the 1980 NLCS. So when you put yourself in the mindset of a Phillies fan back in 1980, I mean, they were the team that had been in existence for the longest period of time without winning a World Series. 97 years. At the time, it was like, wow. You know, it was, I didn't really think there were chances, it's just they had to win. Best year of my life. And Phillies fans had just gotten used to being disappointed. They'd gotten used to frustration. In the recent memory of many Phillies fans, there was the 1964 collapse. There was the sweep by the Reds in the 1976 NLCS. And then there were the times that the Phillies defeated themselves in 1977 and 1978 against the Dodgers. Black Friday. They'd been down this road before. I lived through all three. Um, just being as young as I was, it wasn't that I had a feel for how good they were going to do. I was only about 10. It was just a matter of like, they're my Phillies, of course they're going to win. So when the Phillies made it to the playoffs in 1980, my family, which was a long time baseball family, they just didn't have a lot of confidence. I know we won that two out of three weekend series in Montreal, and I was ecstatic and really happy. Um, and I felt pretty good after game one with Lazinski's homer and we went up one nothing. But you had that sense of like, you know, you were waiting for something. And then when they lost game two and they lost game three, we were like, this is repeated all over again from 76, 70, especially 77 and 78. So going in there, we, we weren't excited. We were just like, wait and see for the NLCS, definitely. It was just because of the three years in a row before that. Uh, you had a little bit of um, optimism because you had Pete Rose. So when we won game one, we were like, okay, this is going, it's going to be different. But when you lose two in a row after that, and you're going back to Houston, we really felt this was the Dodger series all over again. By the time we got the game four of the NLCS, the Phillies were down two games to one. This was an elimination game. Do you remember the triple play that wasn't? Yeah, the play that I think uh, Vern Rule was pitching. Yep. And the Phillies have something going. Runners at first and second, nobody out, and the speedster Gary Maddox stands in. Gary struck out his last time at bat. And again, Vern Rule has two strikes on the hitter. Doug Harvey, you're right. Doug Harvey uh, called a triple play. I mean, Harvey was blocked out. He's out. That's a, it's triple, a triple play. play. And Wait. the inning is over. Here comes Dallas Green. We have seen everything in this series. I do not believe it. 
Well, he originally called a trap. He called a trap. Rule for, throws the first. Well, at first he was forcing out Maddox. Right. And then he changes his mind and says, no, no, no. I think there was a conference and no, 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 no. Um, he caught it on the fly. Right. So when he threw the first, he threw out Trio. And then as they're sitting there arguing, the Astros grab the ball and tag the base <laughs> and claim triple play. Because at that point, McBride's still on third, hadn't returned to second. You know, for 10 year old me at that time was just total confusion. What? Uh, huh? I, I was like this. I was like, what's going on? Uh, my dad had taken me to the his local watering hole down the street. And, you know, at the time you would go in there uh, and hang out. And I was sitting at the bar drinking my birch beer. Um, and he was hanging out with the guys and the game was on. And it was just like, all right, I'm listening and watching and not really paying attention drinking. Uh, my birch beer, of course. Um, and all of a sudden the game kind of comes to a halt. And the guys are talking about the triple play or the catch, and it wasn't a catch. And um, Dallas Green, I remember very vividly seeing Dallas Green on the, the TV screen. So yeah, I just remember Dallas Green, you know, screaming and getting very, very faced with the umpire over the, uh, the 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 issue. What happened? What's going on? It was so confusing. But that was for like 20, 25 minutes. And even Richie Ashburn and Harry Callis were like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's going on here? What's going on here? It didn't make sense. Um, so it was kind of interesting how it resolved itself. Uh, it it was in a time when obviously there was no instant replay. Dallas Green, bright red, pointing at the umpire, screaming. You know, it was, um, it was fortunate. They had the president of the league there and the umpires went over and they spoke to the president of the league. That was crazy, right? Like, when did you ever see that? And the umpire said, well, Bake McBride, he's going to go back to second. He's going to be considered safe. Then the Astros went ballistic, too. Um, so the umps were getting it from both ends. Chubb, there was some confusion. You had a discussion with the umpires. The ruling now has been changed. What was the discussion? What was the original ruling? And now what is the ruling that is going to prevail? The ruling now is a Doug Harvey, the plate umpire, was blocked out, he says, by the base runner. He called it a, 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 a trap ball. Uh, prior, afterwards, both the third base umpire and the first base umpire uh, said the ball was caught. Since the play was made to first base, the runner was doubled off first. Uh, Doug Harvey's ruling is that because his play uh, call may have confused the other runner, he's back on second uh, because he was confused. They made no play on him at the time. So there's a man on second and two outs. All right, Chubb, thank you very much. National League President Chubb Feeney ruling uh, with the help of the umpires that because their decision confused the runner at second base, that meant that the runner at second place probably would not have been tagged out even if the play had been ruled right in the beginning. And so they're allowing the runner at second base to go back, ruling that it is a double play, and the runner at second will be there with two outs, okay? You, right there and then you thought, here we go. This was the, this was the, this is the play that we're waiting for that's gonna botch this whole series again. This is it right here. Is this triple play? But when you saw that happen, that was that's what you, we were waiting for from 77 and 78 we were like this is it this is Manny Mota <laughs> this is this is the play not in time and we have an argument Manny Mota has tied the ball game and went off the glove of Schmidt to Larry Boa what a recovery by Boa we have an argument and we'll see the play unbelievable circumstance and, and thank God luckily nothing became of it for that in that series, in that uh, situation. What a series, what a series. It was, and I say this all the time, draining. Draining, absolutely mentally and physically exhausting. That series was draining. It was great, but draining. <laughs> it was just a lot of like on the edge of your seat, back and forth. I still say the greatest playoff series ever. I remember when Mickey Morandini joined the Phillies. Mickey Morandini. That was back when they were trying to introduce baseball into the Olympics. And Mickey Morandini had been an Olympian. 
So there was a lot of hype about how good a player Morandini could be. And when I learned about the triple play, it was by watching SportsCenter. So I didn't see it live. It just looks so smooth. There it is, one. There it is. There's two. Run the first. Did he get it? Oh, he okay, tags it. okay. He got it. That's right, tagged him. How about that? All right, just like you described, Whitey, <laughs> and unassisted, right? That's the risk of it. <laughs> unassisted triple play. So he catches it, just kind of takes two steps, touches second base, tags the runner. And you remember uh, who the runner was? The runner was a very thin Barry Bonds. Right. Um, and who had the second uh, unassisted triple play? Oh, that was Eric Brunner. Ended the game. It's absurd. I, the defensive replacement, Eric Brunner, came in, and Chase Utley was not in the game, which is crazy as well, right? So, you know, your 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 back bencher, in essence, comes in and gets the unassisted triple play. And the Phils could have had a third unassisted triple play. That was Randy Reddy. Randy Reddy came to the Phils along with John Krupp from the Padres. And Reddy was a utility infielder, so he was a valuable player. He catches it, tags second, and immediately throws to first, and the guy is in with arms reach, within arm's reach. Two feet away from him. I mean, literally. Two feet like, away from him. Yeah, you can see it in his face as he goes off the field. He's like... Now, most of the times with a triple play, what you got is a player who's hit the ball hard but it just happens to be right at where an infielder is playing. It's a fast line drive. And the balls hit so hard, the runners don't have a chance to react. They're running. They're stuck between bases. They're so far away that they don't have the time to return to the bag, and they're vulnerable to either the tag or being forced out before they get back to where they started. Phils did have one in 2007. It was amazing. Oh, it really? It was okay. an around the horn triple play. And the guys who were playing the corners, they weren't your recognizable names. You had Abraham Nunez on third base, and Wes Helms was playing first base. And it was not the only triple play the Phils had in 2007. Oh, that's a double play. That's a triple, triple play. Triple play. Caught on the line, didn't that's he? That's a triple play. Well, DeMiro called him out. DeMiro called him out. Yeah. At third base, they didn't have to re-tag him, and that is a triple play. <laughs> The triple play that Reese Hoskins started, I was at that game. We were sitting, I'm going to say, we were definitely on the left field line. And there was a lot of hype surrounding Reese Hoskins. He had done well in red, so there was a lot of anticipation about what he could do in the major leagues. And oh, by the way, Reese Hoskins was not an outfielder. Had not really played outfield. But Tommy Joseph was playing first base. He well, was not your not your defensive threat. It was players who did. Was it? Remember they wore different jerseys? Yes, I do remember them wearing the, the, the wacky sort of jerseys. They had nicknames in the back instead of their regular names. You you can watch, you see clearly, he catches it, the, the glove goes back behind him, and he pops up, and as he pops up, he drops. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's in his glove the whole time up until he pops up. So, and by baseball rules, that's a catch. Hoskins threw the ball in, threw it second, threw it first, and you're the one who said to me, that's a triple play. Do you remember oh. that was a replay? Yes, this is, there was a replay. It's a triple play. I hope you enjoyed looking at those odd plays in Philly's history. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any more videos on Philly's history. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you have any ideas for topics that we can cover in the future, please let us know in the comments below. If you would like to see more of these videos, please consider becoming a patron through Patreon. Again, we'll have a link in the description box below.